Yoshino comes out swinging with a power packed power station that is literally using the latest technology with solid state batteries and has more power and energy density than a lot of the leading brands out there. I'm going to show you what this thing can do and we'll go over some of the features and compare it to just a couple other models so you guys get an idea that this might really be the wave of the future. So let's get started. <sighs> It has more energy and output power than this, and it has more energy and output power than this Delta II Max. The Yoshino even has more power output than this EcoFlow Delta Pro. The Yoshino has 2611 watt hours of energy versus this AC200 Max from Bluetti and the Delta II Max from EcoFlow both have 2048 watt hours of energy and this can only put out 2200 watts of power while the EcoFlow Delta II Max is only rated at 2400 watts of power. This can put out 4000 watts of power which is pretty crazy. The Bluetti 200 Max ends up coming in at 61.7 pounds, while the EcoFlow Delta II Max, this comes in at just about 51.5 pounds, while the Yoshino is only 1.5 pounds heavier and has more power and energy. This new Yoshino B4000 model SST uses solid state technology batteries that have 2611 watt hours using lithium nickel manganese cobalt solid state batteries. These are much safer as they have a solid electrolyte and should provide at least 2500 cycles or more until it reaches 80% capacity. The B4000 is able to put out 4000 watts of continuous power with a boost of 6000. It can also charge at a fast rate of 1800 watts and is adjustable within the Yoshino app. It can handle up to 600 watts of solar input which we'll go over later. This unit is also expandable and is UPS ready with a 20 millisecond switchover. After getting the power station out of the box, you'll see another box which will contain your manual, quick start guide, also warranty information, and a thank you for joining. You'll also see your AC charging cable along with a 12 volt to XT60 connector, your solar connection cable, and a 12 volt charging cable as well that's included in this box. As we take a look at the front panel, this is where you'll find the main power button to light up the display and power on the unit. You also have a Wi-Fi button, and this is what will help you get connected to the app and more. This USB charging section, all of these ports can charge up to 20 watts except for the one USB-C which is 100 watts which it would have been nice if both of these were 100 watts output. And then you do have another DC section here for 5521 barrel ports that can handle up to about 126 watts and a light above that which this is actually kind of nice if you need to look around during the evening or at night. On the back of the unit is where you will find your main charging ports, the AC charging port up to 1800 watts and the solar which is 60 volts or 600 watts max input. And then below that you will see an RV 30 amp travel trailer outlet that has its own circuit breaker next to it which is kind of nice because it's on its own circuit. Next to that you will see two AC outlets. These are 20 amp plugs and each one of these is actually capable of 2000 watts output each. So that's a total of 4000 watts with these AC outlets. Above the AC outlets is where you will see your smart link port. This is what's going to allow you to expand the system up to multiple batteries and so far I've heard that it will be unlimited and the batteries should have some functionality like solar input and also some DC outlets. On top of the unit you will find some wireless charging ports that we can charge up your favorite smart devices and each one of these is capable of putting out about 15 watts. Okay, so we're gonna get right into testing. I have the Yoshino hooked up to my RV and we're gonna use this as like a house or a test facility. And if you kind of look at this compared to the EcoFlow back here, that's an extra battery on top. So about 5,600 watt hours versus this is 26 and an extra battery would bring us a 52-ish. So not as much power as the EcoFlow setup, but it would take up less room. Now I do have this hooked up to the power watchdog. This is gonna show us a bunch of information that's hooked up to this. And I do have a bonding plug because the watchdog will throw a code or an error if it's not seeing a ground detected. So that's why we have that. But if you don't have one of these, I'll leave a link down below. They're great for protecting your RV. And it, again, it shows us a lot of good info of what the Yoshino is doing. And we'll compare a couple things different between the EcoFlow and this. So we'll go ahead and get started in the RV. I'll show you some information. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the oscilloscope. This is the pure sine wave off of the inverter of the Delta Pro so we can compare it later. And you do see a little bit of wavy lines here and 3 to 5% of distortion is perfectly normal. But overall, these waves still look pretty symmetrical. And if there are any experts, please comment down below. I've been doing my research and studying, but still there's a lot to learn. But overall, we'll compare it to the Yoshino after we get a load on it. 
This is running about 3500 right now on the Delta. Okay, so we're taking a look at the Yoshino before wave. After we apply a load, we'll come back and take a look and see if there's really any changes. But right now it's nice and smooth. We'll adjust this a little bit. And this is kind of what we'll come back and look for is to see how those lines stay symmetrical. But we'll go ahead and apply a load. I'm going to throw up some graphs up here, just information so you guys can see voltage drops and our frequency changes along with the load, along with the app from the Yoshino, which it is a little bit harder to see, but I only have so much room to work with. But we're going to utilize my 15K AC. This does have a micro air easy start, and I suggest getting one of those, especially if using power stations or even generators. It'll save your generator and the AC unit as well, but you can see it kick up on the lower left over there. So with the AC running, this is my 15K again and burning about 1700 watts of energy. The waveform still looks good. We don't really see any distortion and frequency and voltage is still good. Okay, so we'll head to the front AC unit, and this one here is also a 13.5 AC with a soft start on board as well. And again, this is the one I'll use more when I have my power stations on board because this doesn't draw so much power, about a thousand watts, give or take. And so we're going to let this fire up, and then we'll go back and check out the waveform to see what kind of distortion. So that'll take maybe 10 or 15 seconds. We'll check out line two, and actually it's already popped up and away it goes. But as we look at the waveform now, still looks really good, still symmetrical. We're burning about 2,800 watts of energy right now, so. Okay, well normally I like to do a microwave test, but I know this is gonna draw about 1,400 watts, so we're gonna be over by quite a bit, so we're gonna do something else. Okay, so this is a sound test of the Delta Pro doing that 3,500 watt load, so just to give you an idea, it's about 63 dB, about what, two feet from the fans. Put it right up next to it. And it's a little bit more of a whirl or a, you know, higher pitch. It's not terribly loud, but you can't hear it, obviously. So now we'll compare. Okay, so this is a 2800 watt load. It's not quite as much, but these fans pretty much top out around here. And it's really just a different pitch. It's almost as loud. 72 right on it, about two feet away, 62, 63, maybe a pinch quieter. And that's the intake side. So it seems almost as loud, it's probably a little bit quieter, but it's definitely a different pitch, so it, it sounds quieter to me. Okay, we're gonna get closer to max load. I have this plugged in right to the back of the Yoshino. We'll turn this on and then also, you'll be able to see the power from the app because it's directly plugged in. We're not into the RV anymore, so this will kind of show you some different info. And we'll go check out that waveform as we get closer to a max load. And hence the reason I couldn't do another sound test with the hair dryer kind of up and running, but come over here. And let's take a look. So at 3,650 watts, for the most part, that's pretty much stayed the same. Not a lot of difference. Okay, so overload time. Now that should be over what the allowed limit is. So we'll see how long that lasts and just kind of see if the waveform is distorted anymore. As we come up here, well, actually there it went. It already, it already shut off. So looks like we won't really be able to tell. But And that's what you want them to do. You want them to shut off after you've applied too much load to it. Okay, so solar charging time. Now, right now, about 340 watts are coming in. And again, this is allowed 60 volts and 10 amps for a total of 600 watts. So I'll show you my setup. Okay, so we'll keep this simple, but each one of these panels is 335 watts. And we'll say our voltage out of each one is 35 volts. If I put these in series, it'll be too much for this unit because I'll have 70 volts. But if I put them in parallel, my voltage will stay the same and my amps will double, which would be about 16 amps versus 8 amps. So if we take a look here, even though my voltage with all those panels are all in parallel, I only can pull 10 amps because that's what the machine allows. And my voltage is 35, giving me about 342 watts. And as we go over here and take a look, that's what we get is about 340 watts because my input voltage at 35 
times 9.8 gives us that amount. So if you're gonna buy a power station like this, you wanna make sure you buy panels that are correct. Versus a Delta Pro kinda has a high input voltage of 150, it's kind of unique as other power stations are more around 60 and 80 volts like this one. So you just have to remember when you buy power stations like this, you wanna buy solar panels that are gonna match up a little bit better. And Yoshino has solar panels you can buy that perfectly match this, or you can buy 100 watts and 200 watts and put those in series and parallel to get closer to 600. So the next test we're gonna do is see how much inverter loss there is if you were to leave it on on a 12 hour standby test. So we'll turn this on, turn on the AC inverter. As it clicks on, notice you can hear the fan also come on with no load. So I'm wondering how much power this is gonna burn as it just sits here, but it'll be a 12 hour test and we'll come back and see what it looks like. And it's not terribly hot in here, about 80 degrees. And as I came out here this morning, my clock actually died. So as you can see here on my watch though, eight o'clock, 12 hours exactly. Let's see what we get. And ride it only 9% loss. That's actually really good for a 12 hour standby test is a lot of times these will be about 2%, even with a fan on, really hard to hear, but it is wasting energy with the fan just sitting here. There is warm air coming out of the back. And just to show you, Right here on the intake side, it's 77 degrees. And if I go to the back, that's the warm air coming out of it. And it did cool off overnight, about 72. Okay, now we're gonna do the same test, but a DC standby test. I'll turn on the DC side. We'll come back in 12 hours and see how much loss there is. Again, eight o'clock in the evening, and we'll come back at eight in the morning. And it is a little warmer tonight at about 84. And just like that, it's eight in the morning, so we'll see how much loss there is on the DC side, which probably won't be too much. And look at that, 100%. So that's actually pretty good, and sometimes they won't pick it up, but, you know, there might be a 1% loss in there, but it's just not showing it. Okay, so if you were to plug this into a refrigerator like mine, which is nice and old and not efficient whatsoever, which I'm kind of hoping it dies soon, that way I can give myself an excuse to buy a new one, but we'll see how long this lasts. Now this test is gonna start at 8.30 in the morning. And just to give you an idea how much noise it's making while it's sitting here running the fridge. This is about, oh, three and a half feet or so. It's not terribly loud, but you can't hear it. And if I was sitting at my table, I would notice it. Okay, so this died about 1.30 in the morning and all the information is on that, so we'll take a look. Now this was able to run 15.4 hours with me not being conservative. I used it as normal and was able to get 1.87 kilowatts. Now another test I wanted to show you is when this is charging from DC, say from this, which that could also be solar, is that when you take your AC cord and plug this in, you can see about 112 watts right there. And now when we take our cord and plug it in, you can see that the input goes to zero and so now our DC charging is discontinued and now it goes to AC charging. So this is something I would actually like to see fixed, which is probably easy enough to do through a firmware update because then you can't solar charge and AC charge at the same time. Now I did do a 0.25C rate discharge test on this to see how much power we could actually draw out of the Yoshino. And you can see our power factor number is about one for one. And we'll see how many kilowatt hours we get out of this and we'll come back in just a couple hours and see what we get. And just like that, the test is over. Now I was able to get 2,335 watt hours out of this unit for 89% of 2,611 watt hours with a 3.65 hour runtime, which is actually pretty good for this unit. Now overall, Yoshino is a brand new line. They've come out with this large, powerful unit and they do have some small portable ones as well. Now overall, this is a pretty powerful unit. It does have some great features, some big specs, but there are a couple things I wouldn't mind seeing changed as far as solar input. I wouldn't mind seeing the voltage a little bit higher. That would allow you some more flexibility with the type of solar panels you use and also increase the amount of solar coming in. A thousand watts would be great. I also wouldn't mind seeing DC and AC charging. That way you can solar charge or at least DC charge and AC charge at the same time if you need to. 
But I am curious as to what you guys think of Yoshino's new product. Are they really going to be the ones who kind of take over later on, especially as they come out with more products? I know they do have other things in line in the future. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And I will have some discount codes soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that and make sure to subscribe. And I hope to see you guys next time.